Hello everyone, Steve Goodwin here with my anchor test video number 130. Today we're going to look at all the 45 pound range anchors in the sandy mud using the winch up to and a bit over 5,000 pounds of pulling force. Now in addition to those high numbers we're going to also look at two other parameters. Uh, the big one is in addition to how much strain the anchor can resist is what does the anchor do? How does it behave? Does it uh, stay engaged? Does it roll out? Does it pop out? Uh, and if it does come out, does it reset? We'll explore all that. Uh, those not familiar with my winch testing, uh, what I do is I have a winch installed in a test boat that is immobilized via a dead man anchor. That happens to be a large fortress anchor. Uh, the test anchors go out the stern and I end up pulling in on the dead man road. There is a strain gauge in digital readout that you'll see in the lower left hand part of your screen throughout the whole video. That's going to give us in real time just exactly how much strain is on the anchor simultaneous with a great down shot view uh, video camera of the anchor as it's being forced through the seabed. Uh, that third parameter we're going to look at in addition to the, the holding numbers and the behavior is whether or not the anchor can stand it structurally and I did bend one of the anchors during this test. So you may notice that I have not used the word holding power and I have a problem with it now at least for this seabed. Uh, to me, the word holding means an anchor that has got some strain on it and it is not moving. If it's moving, well, I guess we'd say it is dragging and nobody wants a dragging anchor. However, the notion that an anchor can be up near its maximum usable pulling force and be stationary, it's fantasy. For this seabed, it does not happen. I now have done enough testing and enough measuring that when an anchor is up anywhere near its maximum usable pulling force, it will be moving. And that this, the difference between its true non-moving pulling force number and its what I call maximum usable pulling number, it's as much as two or three times. And you might say, well, hey, I don't, I don't want an anchor or I don't want to consider my anchor if it's moving. And that's, that I think is selling things short. And here's why. Uh, you, as you'll see, these anchors up near maybe 5,000 pounds, they'll be moving, but they're just barely moving. They're just creeping along, you know, maybe an inch every 10 seconds or so. And the way boats ride to an anchor and in a wind with waves is not steady. You don't have a steady pull. It is a jerking rhythmic motion. And these peaks, and that's really all I'm considering when I, when I measure this stuff and correlate it to a wind speed, that would be the peak number that coincides with the boat surging, maybe a wave hitting the bow. And those peaks do not last very long and they certainly don't happen, you know, for a week at a time. They may only last for minutes or maybe hours as maybe a frontal passage, frontal passage moves by. So if an anchor has, so, say, a thousand peaks at 5,000 pounds and it moves a quarter inch per peak, well, that sounds like about 250 inches or let's say a little more than 20 feet. Now, I personally, if my boat moves 20 feet as a hurricane passes by, I'm going to call that a win. So once again, I'm going to use the word resistance and avoid the, the use of the word holding just to avoid any kind of controversy or any problems in this definition of what the anchor is actually doing. Now the winch pulling apparatus has the capability of pulling up to 90 feet and that's what most of these anchors got. They were either stayed engaged and got pulled uh, again up to 90 feet or maybe if they popped out they were dragging on the surface for a very long distance. Now some of that distance gets taken up by the dead man anchor continuing to set and in at least one incidence a very very high performing test anchor basically outperformed the dead man and we're going to see the dead man was most certainly dragging toward the test anchor. Now the way I rate these anchors is I look at that full up to 90 feet of pulling and I watch for a peak on the scope and the peak gets recorded and then I'll do another whole complete redeployment at another 90 feet and watch for another peak. Then I just simply average those peaks together and then divide it by the weight of the anchor. As you know, for, that's the way I rate all anchors now. I don't really just compare the, the ultimate holding or resistance numbers. Again, it's all about the performance divided by the anchor weight. First up is the 45-pound roll bar Rockna. 
This is an anchor that I purchased brand new. It did have a quality control sticker from 2020. It is unmodified, undamaged, it's not bent, and it was built in a very straight and correct manner. It should be as good as it gets for this type. We'll see very shortly here a peak right there of 660 pounds. That was the most this anchor could muster. I did conduct this, this exact test twice, and it repeated that same 660 pounds twice in a row. Uh, after those, the peaks, uh, the, the holding tapers off either abruptly or in this case, uh, it hung in there in the 500s. I saw another brief 600 there, uh, but eventually it collects enough seabed and holding power tapers right off. We do see some weeds along for the ride there, but um, we'll see in some other views uh, that the, the weeds here are just not a factor, um, especially on retrieval here. We'll see once we start lifting the anchor up, the weeds just sort of fall away, and we're left with the nothing but mud adhered to the anchor. And here the anchor is uh, presumably fully disengaged from the seabed. Uh, holding power uh, comes right back down into the hundreds. Here's the anchor on retrieval. Uh, weeds have just sort of fallen away. They were just sort of clinging to the mud there. Okay, here's the second deployment for the roll bar Rockna. It does the same exact peak resistance as that first try. It's 660 pounds, and we see it right there. Incidentally, 660 pounds, by my best estimate, is equal to about a 30-knot blow, assuming we're anchoring with this anchor and my sailboat panope. Uh, again, this is a 45-pound anchor. My sailboat is a 34-footer, and it weighs about 6 or 7 tons. I did measure the load on the road uh, during a 20-knot blow. worked out to be about 300-pound peaks, and if you do the math, uh, that works out to maybe be about 30 knots assuming that the force on the anchor goes up by the square of the speed of the wind. These next shots are the same anchor, but uh, it's, it's a propeller thrust test. Um, I'm able to use the prop for this anchor because its holding power is so low in this seabed. Uh, I thought I'd just uh, back up those winch numbers with some prop numbers. Also, I resurrected my old school side view camera. So it's a great way to, view, to visualize and get, get images of the vertical uh, action of the anchor. Uh, normally with those straight down shots, it's really hard to tell whether the anchor is moving up or down. But again, we're looking downward at about a 45 degree angle from the side and we get these great pictures uh, from, that, from that vantage point. Uh, we'll see here the anchor uh, did set just instantaneously. This anchor never has a problem setting when it is clean. By the way, I've tested uh, four different Rockna anchors in this seabed. I won't say dozens of, of straight line holding checks, but certainly more than 10, maybe 15. It's always the same. None of these anchors have ever produced anywhere near the holding power of many competing anchors. I'll mention that I've also conducted uh, longer scope checks. Uh, at 7 to 1 scope, the anchor uh, released at about 850 pounds in this seabed, and then also back down at 5 to 1 scope, but with a very long and somewhat heavy chain. Uh, it got a little improvement. Uh, got a release at about 950 pounds. Uh, still far, far less than many competing anchors. In fact, less, less holding than even a lot of 20-pound anchors that I've tested. So the anchor is now neared its uh, maximum potential. The roll bar is nowhere near being buried, neither is the shank. That's uh, very normal for this anchor in this seabed. It just, just cannot uh, develop any deeper bury without grabbing a hold of a, of a blob of seabed. And that new shape, that new blob shape, just can't continue diving. In fact, it just pops up and releases. Here's that same event, but slowed down at quarter speed. It gets pretty interesting footage. Uh, the anchor's starting to move, and we see that mud that's on top of it. It's moving with the anchor, and now the anchor is rising. And off it goes. I did give the anchor a second pull with the propeller thrust, and it, again, it was identical to the first. So the anchor is very, very consistent here in this seabed. 
Unfortunately, it is just consistently low holding power. Anchor had a, a full release here at, the, at, again, 465 pounds of thrust. Next anchor is a 44 pound genuine Bruce anchor. Like the Rockna before it, this anchor uh, develops its maximum holding very quickly. It's not a very large amount of holding, but uh, within an anchor length or two, the anchor uh, will, will make about 700 pounds of pull on this try. And it does not pop up, so to speak, like the, the Rockna does. It takes a bit longer for it to disengage. And when it does, it rolls out on its side. We're going to see it on its side here shortly. In fact, I think at one point it's completely upside down with a big ball of mud in its hand. And there at the bottom of the screen, we can see one of the fluke tines, and there's another. I can't really tell what the orientation is. Maybe the anchor kind of corkscrewed and did a full... 360 or, or at least 180 degrees of rotation uh, but in any event at this point the anchor was hopelessly fouled and it would not reset I did pull it for a, a very long distance um, perhaps eventually enough of the mud might jostle away and it might reset but uh, uh, I, I again I pulled it uh, many dozens of feet uh, with no no resetting whatsoever on the retrieval, the, the mud fell off, uh, just that one little piece of seaweed left over. I don't think actually that seaweed was on the anchor during the pull. I think it just sort of ended up there on the retrieval. Here's a quick shot of the same anchor from five years ago during the deep set test. Uh, the propeller thrust was all I had back then, and at 750 pounds, this anchor releases. Uh, this was with 3.5 to 1 scope, but it was with all a very heavy chain. It was 3 8 triple B, and I've done the math and done some uh, comparisons. Uh, this road combination will produce a better or more favorable angle of pull than uh, a, a light chain 5 to 1 scope pull. Next anchor is the 47 pound Anchor Right Super Sarka. The anchor did develop its uh, maximum resistance for this pull right away within an anchor length or two. It uh, did make 1,400 pounds briefly. There's 1,000 pounds, 1,100, 1,200, and there's 14 just briefly there. It's quite a bit better than those first two anchors, but as you'll see, there's, uh, there's other anchors that can do far more than this. Uh, I don't think the anchor was ever fully buried. At this point, I believe uh, mud has sort of heaped and piled up in front of the roll bar. And uh, you can see the holding is decreasing. At one point, it was down oh, around four or 500 pounds, but the anchor never released. It was always engaged. I pulled the anchor for 80 or 90 feet in total. Again, never fully released. It never rolled on its side. So that's good. Its behavior and the way it reacted was, was, was favorable but not, not a tremendous amount of holding power. We'll see that whatever bud was uh, impacted into the anchor during the pull has fallen away. Uh, anchor right anchors all have holes in their flukes, and that does uh, help mud to not adhere. Here's another pull for the Super Sarka. This occurred on a whole different day, but the parameters are all the same. I'm right, right in the same spot. Same scope, same road, just doing repeats for many of these anchors just to double check and make sure that the data is accurate. Uh, the anchor really repeated its first performance very, very closely uh, in that it, uh, within, within an anchor length or two, it uh, built right up to its peak. It was the same peak, once again, it, was, it just touches 1,400 pounds briefly. The anchor never buries completely. We can still see the top of the roll bar, and there's 14, there's our peak. At this point, the anchor uh, starts uh, dragging more or less at the same depth of bury. Uh, roll bar disappeared there, but I, I believe that's just material that is sort of heaped up in front of it. Uh, the anchor uh, kind of hovered around 1,000, 11, 1,200 here for a little ways. And then the anchor lifted up a bit. You can see more of the anchor showing. And for dozens of feet, it held or resisted at about five, six, at times 700 pounds. 
Next anchor is the 40 pound Knox, and I'm comparing it with the 45 pound range anchors, which sometimes are up to 50 pounds. Uh, that's just the nature of the beast. Uh, this particular uh, anchor comes in 40 pound and then a much larger. So that's what we get. I sort of normalize uh, the, the comparison by dividing the anchor weight by its performance. So we should get good apples to apples uh, numbers in terms of its uh, holding power per weight. In any event, this anchor does eventually ramp up to about a 1,300 pound resistant, which is fairly good. I'm, I'm going to estimate that, that that level of resistance might be equal to about 45 knots of wind for my sailboat Panope. In any event, this anchor is, it took a little longer to reach its maximum holding. Then it, it did not release or, or pull out initially. It, it did drag a fair amount of distance with, with decent holding power, about 1,000 pounds it hovered. Then it finally popped up, rolled over as you just saw, and at that point it was game over. I did drag it a very long distance, no reset. Here on the retrieval, we see absolutely no weeds on the anchor whatsoever. It was just mud that was fouling. And we see it's fully packed fluke there on the, uh, on the bow roller. Here's take two for the 40 pound Knox. It was similar to that first take, uh, but it was a little better, better overall performance. Uh, instead of, uh, 1300 pounds of resistance, it, uh, Briefly made 1,700 pounds. Uh, a similar kind of a slow ramp up, steady ramp up to that maximum. Um, another difference is that that 1,000 pound sort of hover that occurred on the first take for a short distance. Uh, in this take, that hover remained for a considerable distance, say about 20, maybe 30 feet, where, it, again, it sort of hovered uh, at about 1,000 pounds after its peak of 1700 which occurs here just shortly we're seeing 16 kind of a little short hover there at 1600 and there there's our 17. we'll watch those numbers they're gonna they're gonna creep down a bit and eventually they spend quite a bit of time hanging around low teens thousand occasionally dips a little bit below And here's the tail end of that long sort of thousand pounds of resistant hover. The anchor starts to taper off in its, its holding. Uh, I assume the anchor is lifting up at this point. We see a large mud ball there. I think the anchor just tipped over onto its side. And we see our resistance is down in the low hundreds. Uh, I pulled it this way for, uh, again, another 20 or 30 feet. Some of it just by hand. No indication it was going to reset. Next anchor is the 46 pound Lumar Delta. As all the other anchors, when it's clean, this anchor sets right away. But its, its behavior was a little different in that it did not have a steady climb up to its maximum performance. It, uh, it's right away started making a pretty good holding power there in the upper hundreds, the 800, 900. It stayed there for a while, a bit of a hover. Then it started increasing. Now we're up to a thousand pounds. Another a bit of a hover at that at that amount of resistance, and then it popped right up to the mid-teens. There's fifteen hundred, and it did stayed there for quite some time, about fifteen feet or so of my pulling. We see the shank is still visible there. Don't think this anchor ever completely buries. Sometimes mud sort of uh, covers the the shank, but uh, n never a real true diver. In any event, the anchor did uh, eventually make it up to uh, just under 2,000. Call it a 1,900 pounds of resistance, and then it tapered back off. In fact, it went right back down to about 300, 
to maybe even 200 at times, never fully disengaged. I don't think it was on its side either. I think the anchor was always at least partially engaged. And then it did something that I think is very significant. It resets itself and reburies and repeats, almost repeats, that first initial uh, peak of, uh, of, well, we saw 1900, and you're going to see another peak here of 1700. And I think that's, that is a pretty good uh, trait for an anchor to be able to set, make, a, make, a, to make some good holding power, basically release, and then reset itself and repeat. By the way, that 1,900 pounds, I'm going to take a stab and say that that's good for about, or equivalent to about 50 knots for my sailboat. And here we are with a second peak again there in the 1,700 solidly. And from this point on, for the rest of the pole, which was uh, another, oh, maybe 20, 30 feet, uh, the anchor, it just hung right in there and made, made good holding. You can see on the retrieval, uh, no mud really whatsoever, so... This convex style anchor does seem to shed mud. Next anchor is the 42 pound stainless steel Lumar Epsilon. This anchor had the similar performance to some of those earlier anchors we viewed in that it ramped up to its maximum potential right away just within a couple anchor lengths and it did it did resist 2200 pounds just briefly followed by an a very abrupt release from the seabed here we're 13 14 climbing on up just very steady climb no plateau whatsoever just as soon as it gets to its uh, maximum here shortly we'll see what happens there's 2,000, 21, and 22. And sure enough, up the anchor comes. And now it's, I believe, just basically on the surface. And then it plops right on over on its side. And that is the end of the story. I was dragging this anchor for many, many feet, even just by hand. And no reset. We see that much of the mud has slipped away. Uh, on the retrieval. Unfortunately, that mud stayed put during that very long drag on the seafloor. Here's take two for the Epsilon. Unfortunately, we'll see here we've got a bit of a camera tether fouling issue. It, it hung up on the chain a little bit and all it means is the anchor uh, leaves our field of vision. Uh, just the very end of the shank there at the chain attach point that stays in vision So the anchor is just just out of view on the bottom of the screen uh, we, we get to see that there isn't uh, Significant debris causing any problems. So that's always good with this footage to verify the conditions on the seafloor And of course we still have our our strain read out there in the lower left uh, the anchor uh, repeated its first performance fairly closely um, on the one hand, the, the maximum resistance was slightly less. It only made 2,000 instead of 2,200. Uh, it was a long, steady climb up to that 2,000 peak. Uh, then it, however, it did better in that it hovered uh, oh, around 2,000, maybe a little, little less than that, for quite a distance. Call it maybe 15 or perhaps 20 feet, hovering along just below 2,000. There's our peak there, and now it's going to just hover here for quite a, quite a ways. I'm not going to, I cut most of that out. Uh, here we are still hovering along back up to 2,000, so that's, that's pretty good. It's um, able to maintain that performance for quite a distance. However, suddenly, and without any, any notice at all, and I could really feel it from the boat, the anchor had a really an abrupt release. I actually felt a good, good lurch of the boat there. And any event after that, uh, once again, it was game over. The anchor was hopelessly fouled with mud and no chance of resetting. Next anchor is another stainless steel model. This one is a 46-pound Ultra. Sets right away initially and gets itself upright and oriented properly just right, right away. It had a slow climb, nice steady slow climb up to a peak of 2600. 
uh, and then it kind of kind of held that for a while, and you'll see what happens. It it uh, ramps slowly back down, and and did have a release coming up. Uh, it wasn't a violent sort of a pop out style release. It was more of a rollout. But I'm going to go ahead and just let this roll. Much much of it roll. I've edited some, but I'm going to go ahead and let you watch uh, a fair a fair amount of this somewhat long poll that I did with this anchor. Now in the second try, or take two for this, which I'll show you shortly, uh, the anchor resisted a bit more. It was 3,200 pounds. And if we average the 32 and the 26, we get 2,900, which is the number I use in the comparisons. And I'm going to go ahead and estimate that to be about a 60-knot blow if this anchor was holding my boat. Of course, in an actual blow, the pull or the this 2,900 pounds of pull would not be happening continuously. It would be just the very peaks happening occasionally as waves and wind gusts and maybe boat motions sort of coincide. At least that's what I noticed in the 20 knot blow that I took some, some fairly careful measurements. It's all just a guess. Any kind of differences in waves and different boat motion characteristics, you'd all get different numbers. So again, these, these wind speed numbers I'm giving you are just a ballpark just for something for you to think about as you watch these anchors in their, in their motion and performance. So now we see the numbers are dwindling down. The anchor is releasing, although it's happening slowly. It's, I wouldn't call that a pop out. It was more of a slow rollout. And now the anchor is fully released. It's on its side, and in fact, it's rolling all, all upside down. If you look carefully, you can see the toe of the anchor as well above the seabed. Dra I did drag the anchor for a considerable distance, and it would not self-right. I believe the weight of all that mud is, prevent is just disrupting the natural balance of the anchor, and it just cannot roll into the correct position. This is a flat face here with lines. It sure looks like it was dragging along on that face. That was very likely what was preventing the reset. Here's take two for that 46 pound Ultra. I'm not going to show you as much of the footage, although the, the test actually took longer than that first try, uh, in that the anchor was engaged for almost the full 80 or 90 feet of drag that it endured. But I'll just read off what I, my notes that I wrote down. Here, here's what I believe it did, as accurate as I could make out. It had a slow climb up to about 3,000. And it hovered there for quite a distance. It had a peak of 3,200. That was, that was the most I saw out of this anchor out of both poles, was 32. It then decreased down to about a 2,000 pounds of resistance, and it hovered there for quite a while. Then the, 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 the resistance decreased to the upper teens for a bit. Then it back up into the low 2,000s. Then it wandered down to the upper 100s, or just below 1,000 for quite a while. Then it was back up into the upper teens, and then finally toward the end of that 80 or 90 feet of dragging, it had a virtually a full release. Uh, it didn't go upside down like in that first try, but it so the toe was sort of engaged, but only with a couple hundred pounds or less of resistance. And indeed, there was a, mo a blob of mud fouling the anchor. giant blob of mud just fell off. Just missed it. Next anchor is the 50 pound CQR. Now I only did one test with this, one take, and the, re the justification for only doing one is the fact that the anchor was so steady and stable throughout the 90 feet of pull. Uh, the anchor never released, never rolled out, just just stayed hooked up and was very, very stable the whole time. Here are my notes. Uh, the anchor was steady between 2,500 and 3,500 pounds. It had a peak of 36. There were multiple peaks above 3,000. In fact, the latter half of the of the pole, it just it stayed mostly around 3,000. 
Uh, the least I saw was the low 2000s, only just for a couple brief moments. Uh, and again, it, it just repeated its, uh, its, its resistance up into the 3000s multiple, multiple times. No, no sign or indication whatsoever that this anchor was going to release. 3,600 pounds of pull. I'm going to estimate as roughly equal to about 70 knots of wind for my boat. Here we've jumped ahead to the final few feet of this 90 feet of pulling and we can see the anchor is still making resistance in the upper 2000s. The anchor came up with a perfectly clean fluke and I think that's at least part of the reason why this anchor was so stable throughout its drag. Next anchor is the 43-pound Mantis M1. So here was the rundown. The anchor had a slow climb up to its peak of 2,600 pounds. It then hovered in the low 2000s, and then a slow descent down to 1,000 where it hovered. Then there was a hover in the upper hundreds all the way to the end of its 90 feet of pull. The anchor never released, and the forward part of the fluke, as we can see, was very well covered with mud. This is take two for the 43-pound Amanda Sam 1. Very similar to that first try. Uh, the big difference was it had a little bit higher numbers. Actually, quite a bit higher. Um, remember, the first peak was at 2,600. Uh, for this take, we had a peak of 4,100. So here's the rundown. It was a slow, steady climb up to that peak of 4,100. Then it hovered in the low 3,000s. Then it slowly descended down into the upper hundreds, just below 1,000. And that was just like the, t the first take. Uh, the final segments of the pull was very stable, upper hundreds. Uh, it was actually many, many feet at, in this condition. I do not believe the seaweed that we see was a big factor. On both occasions when I retrieved the anchor, the seaweed just was not part of the anchor really. It was just sort of caught on the road just a little bit. So very consistent, uh, never released, uh, but again toward the ends of these pulls holding power or hold resistance was quite low. And just like take one for this anchor, we see a fluke, especially the forward portion of the fluke, covered with mud. Next anchor is the 50-pound galvanized steel Sarka XL number 5. This anchor was a very quick performer in that it developed a pretty high peak right away, just within a few anchor lengths, and it ramped right on up to a 3,000-pound hover. The anchor then decreased into the low 2000s, and then the anchor appeared to be rolling. I noticed that the seabed was being disrupted on, off to one side, and it also pulled the camera down into the seabed. And that happens when the attach point of the camera tether becomes deep enough that enough, enough seabed, that's what I say, kind of captures that road. And I think if the anchor is upside down before it releases, well, that's a good way to get that attach point lower. So we can see here that the anchor is fully released. It is upside down, and it did drag for a fair distance before it uh, must have shed a, uh, some, a blob of mud on that underside, and it does reset right there. Okay, next the anchor basically repeated its initial setting in that it uh, developed a very high peak right away. We see a steady 3600 and a touch of 37. That was the, the, the maximum for this pull. Uh, you might think that the anchor is not moving forward much at this point, let it stationary, but what's actually happening is it is creeping forward and it is dragging the camera downward once again. And it's just going to repeat this exact performance. We see seabed being disrupted to the left just a bit more. So I think, again, the anchor is ro was rotating or corkscrewing a bit. And just like before, the camera tether gets fully captured, plunges the camera into the seabed, and we don't see much. But Well, we can focus on those uh, tension readouts there. We see the, the resistance slowly decreasing, 
And once again, we get a full release. We're right down in the low hundreds. And uh, just like before, when the camera tether pops out, uh, we see the anchor is upside down once again. Or I should say mostly upside down. It's not exactly pointing directly up at us, but uh, took took a little bit longer drag this time. It may have been, oh, 10 or 20 feet of this before uh, it must have shed whatever mud was preventing it to rotate. But there, it did uh, reset. This did occur right at the very end of the 90 feet of pull, so I didn't get a chance to do uh, yet another reset. But we see some mud on the fluke on the retrieval, but not much. Here's take two for the Sarka XL. Uh, just like the first one, uh, it was a quick climb up to about a 3,000 pound hover, but then rather than rolling and releasing, the anchor continued to climb slowly up to a 4,600 pound peak. It then descended into the low 2,000s, hovered there for a while, then released. Then it reset, and once again, uh, reset hard. This time it climbed right back up to a 4,600-pound hover. And then in the last, literally the last inches of the 90 feet of pulling segments that I had available, it touched 5,000. So 5,000 peak for that one. So what I've done on any of these that I've conducted two tests for, two complete uh, deployments and tests, I take the peak from each 90-foot deployment and uh, the, and then I average though, I add them together and average them. So for this anchor, it was 3,700 peak for the first try, 5,000 for this one. It gives an average of 4,350 pounds. And uh, I'll do it once again. I'll give an uh, uh, an attempt at a wind speed, uh, what that would equal to on my boat. And I'm going to call this 75 knots for Panope with this 50 pound galvanized steel Sarka XL. I think it's noteworthy that mud has impacted into this fluke. Uh, normally these convex anchors shed their mud. Uh, I'll, I'll talk more about my theories at the end of the video on the workbench. Next is the aluminum Sarka XL number 5. It shares the same external dimensions as the steel version. The only difference being the width of the shanks. This is slightly thicker metal. Helps keep the strength of the shank uh, similar to that steel version. Uh, similar is also the way we will describe the performance. It was really very, very close to the same. Uh, this anchor uh, sets right away, did a, a slow climb up to a peak of 3,800. Remember, uh, for that steel version, one of the first uh, peaks was 3,700. So that's almost the same. Uh, it then had a full release uh, complete with the plunging camera. So it had the same kind of a rotating, sort of going upside down uh, phenomena. And indeed, once the camera became uh, released from its uh, the grasp of the seabed and we could see, yes, the anchor was upside down. Uh, the big difference, however, was that this anchor never reset. It stayed mostly upside down. The point or the toe of the anchor never became anywhere close to the seabed again. Uh, there was a fair amount of weed present, but um, I had quite a few glimpses of it as it was being dragged along. And to my eye, weed was not the issue. It was, a, again, a mud impacted into the fluke. Here's take two for the aluminum XL, and just like the second try for the steel XL, uh, the aluminum version had a very high peak. In fact, it uh, pretty much maxed out my system for pulling on anchors. Uh, sets right away and had a nice steady slow climb right up to 5,000 pounds of pull, and it stayed there for quite a while. And in fact, what happens with my particular winch, when you're up about 5,000, it is really struggling. Even with a two to one snap shackle that I use uh, religiously above 3,000 pounds of pull, uh, even with that two to one advantage, the winch uh, really bogs down, becomes very hot. Uh, I actually get um, wires and the, the housing of the motor gets too hot to touch. So uh, after 
quite a while of, of trying to go further beyond this 5,000, I just gave up and said, well, you win, Anchor. You, you, you're, you're doing really well. Stay and put there. Uh, the Anchor doesn't move a whole lot, as you can see. It's possible that the Dead Man Anchor is also moving. In fact, I'm almost certain, you know, as you set any anchor, it has to move. And that Dead Man, if this is the first pull, and it was on this particular try, if it's the first set against the Dead Man, well, that Dead Man has to move as well. So, uh, it's a good 5,000 pound pull, and uh, averaged with that previous 3,800 pound pull, I'll give this uh, Aluminum Excel a 4,400 pound rating on the charts. So at this point, the battery voltage is low, the motor's bogged down, everything's getting hot, so I just cut it off at that point, and here we are in retrieval, just a little bit of mud back there in the back part of the fluke. Next is the 50 pound quick set 50 in stainless steel. So the anchor uh, very quickly ramped right up to the mid 2000s of resistance and then it hovered in the low 3000s. And if you look to the left of the anchor track there you'll see cracking and I think that's evidence that the anchor was rolling and sure enough we get enough rolling to uh, capture the camera tether just like with those excels. Now the difference is is this anchor never rolled out completely or released. Uh, the resistance did uh, decay and at this point we don't get to see any more footage. The camera was hopefully ho hopelessly fouled. It decayed down into the mid-teens and but then it ramped back up again. I did drag the anchor the full 90 feet, and at the 82 foot mark, the uh, the resistance peaked at 4,400, and then it tapered back down and finished the uh, the pull in the 3,000s. And the anchor was uh, nearly spotless on retrieval. Next is the 44-pound Mantis M2. And here's the rundown. Uh, take one here. The anchor quickly reached a hovering number of about 3,000 pounds, and it held that for a long time. It did have the opportunity to pick up quite a bit of weed. You're going to see lots and lots of weed in this test. Uh, then the anchor had a peak of 3,300 pounds briefly. Then the anchor descended with a hover in the low 2000s for quite some time. Then the anchor had a full release with no reset, and I pulled it for an additional 15 feet. So it was about 70 feet uh, before that release, and again, the final 15, uh, no reset. At this point, the anchor is on its side with one of its ears visible. Now, if you want to toss out this particular test because of all that weed, be my guest. I will note that none of this weed is rooted. So that, that anchor did set cleanly, and I believe the fluke was uh, just down in mud and not affected by weed. The shank and the chain, certainly affected by weed, and certainly uh, may have prevented the anchor from burying further. Here's take two for that 44 pound Mantis M2. Fortunately, we landed in a nice clean spot there, no weeds. So we know darn well that that fluke got completely buried prior to it encountering any of this weed that is just loose and sort of sitting on the surface. Uh, however, the anchor did quickly pick up weed and we're gonna see we have just as much, if not more weed, as take one. But I think you'll find that the anchor just does not seem to mind as its performance does really, really well. And what it did was it, it had a very long hover in the 3000s, uh, many, many, many feet. Uh, it then increased into the upper 4000s and it hovered there for quite some time. Uh, it's a bit of an oscillation between three and four, but it eventually achieved a peak of 5,300 pounds, which is the, that's, I, I try to cut things off at 5,000, but I was kind of pushing things a little bit. Got it up to 53, and it hovered there in the low 5,000s 
maybe upper four thousands for a bit and then my winch got really really hot and I just cut things off at that time. Now 5300 pounds on my boat is gonna be equal to roughly 80 knots or more so weed or not that is truly excellent performance. I uh, didn't see any indication that it was uh, decreasing at the end. Uh, again, I just pulled on it until my winch started to fry and cut it off at that point. Okay, I'm trying to retrieve the Mantis M2. It had a 5,000 pound pull here and now we're directly over the anchor pulling straight up and I'm gonna uh, just winch it on up and, and see if we can uh, release it before we sink the boat. So watch the bow, it should, it should descend as we come up on the winch here. Okay, there's, uh, there's a thousand pounds on the strain on the winch. Uh, looks like we got more than a foot of freeboard. Uh, we're down to 900, so I bet you that anchor is starting to ooze upward. We'll give it a little bit more. I do have a knife at the ready in case the winch runs away. That is the safety uh, for for not sinking the boat because I believe the, the winch certainly can just pull the bow right under. Okay, I'm seeing a peak of 1400 there, but then the, the clutch or the brake, I should say, on the winch is not uh, engaging right away, so it relaxes some of that tension. I think with a little patience, this anchor will eventually uh, come come free. There she popped out. Good. Here's yet another pull for that 44-pound Mantis M2, uh, but this occurred earlier in the year here, 2021, and with different parameters. I'm pulling here at 8 to 1 scope and with a lot of chain. There's 80 feet of 5 16 chain. So for people that wonder what longer scopes and more chain does for anchor performance, um, this is a little bit of a peek into that question. Um, I mean, generally speaking, we all know that longer scopes and uh, chain roads will decrease the angle of pull at the anchor and should make holding power increase. But it's not the case here. This anchor holds just under 5,000 pounds for quite a distance. So, it's a, you know, it's not a large sample, but it would appear that this anchor is just a 5,000 pound anchor and the uh, angle of pull doesn't seem to change much, uh, at least above 5 to 1 scope. Here's the tail end of, uh, I think it was about 90 feet of pulling once again, and it does p touch 5,000. That was for the whole pull. Gets 5,000, maybe 5,100, so maybe it had some more in it. But no, it was uh, quite a bit of pulling hovering below 5,000. Now here's something else that's interesting. Notice that when I stopped winching, that the, the brake on the winch actually engaged properly this time and you can go back and rewind it but right at the point of stopping the winch the pull was about 4800 and everything is just static at this point there's nothing moving except for anchors and if you look at the readout there in the left we see the pull slowly winding down we're down to 3100 and soon it'll be 3,000, and it just continues. And I see this over and over and over. Whenever this winch successfully stops, I look at that readout, and it never holds. Not in this seabed and many other seabeds than which I test. And what's that, what that is telling us is that the, the idea that an anchor at very high holding will remain absolutely stationary it's fantasy for this seabed uh, and many others. There's slow motion of anchors when they are near their maximum holding power just every single time I've, I've been able to measure it. Next anchor is the 45-pound Spade S100 in galvanized steel. 
So here's the rundown. The anchor had a fairly quick ramp up and then a plateau in the 3000s, followed by a slow climb and another plateau in the low 4000s. And this was, again, pretty slow. I've gone through oh, a couple dozen feet of pulling at this point. Then the anchor hovered in the upper 4000s with a peak of 4,800, and that was the most it did. Then it started a slow descent down into the 3,000s, and at that time point, I realized that the winch was getting very hot. There was a, uh, a melting wire again. I actually had to correct some, some issue with that, but in any event, there's a possibility the anchor was in the process of releasing. And my evidence for that theory comes from two other spade anchors that did just that in this very same test, and we'll get to those now. This is another 100 series spade. It is a 27 pound aluminum spade A100. It does share external dimensions with that previous galvanized S100, uh, except for the width of the shanks. Uh, the aluminum version has a slightly wider shank. Now the performance was really quite similar. It had a slow and steady climb up into the mid 4000s where it was it hovered there for quite a while uh, it did have a peak of just under 4700 pounds I, I call it a 4600 pound peak then the anchor began a very slow descent it slowly decreased its resistance and unfortunately the camera battery died before it released fully Here's what the release looked like from the top side. We see the strain there in the mid-2000s where it hung out for a while. It then dropped down to 2000, and at that point it popped out very quickly. We see strain dropping into the low 100s. I did pull the anchor for a more than another 30 feet, no indication that it would reset. On retrieval, we see the rem remnants of what was undoubtedly a larger ball of mud, and there was absolutely no weed on the anchor on retrieval. Here's another spade anchor, this one a 21 pound galvanized steel S60. So this is a smaller anchor and we see smaller numbers. We see mid-teens there, had a peak of about uh, 1500 pounds and then immediately had a very abrupt release. I did pull this anchor many, many more feet, uh, much of it just by hand, no chance of a reset. Okay, here's the spade S60 after retrieval. This anchor made about 1,500 pounds of winch power before slowly releasing, and then once it released, it failed to reset, and I don't think there's any reason to question why. That is as mud-fouled an anchor as I've seen. In fact, we can even see marks here where the anchor was dragging on the side of this ball of mud. Next anchor is the truly colossal Viking 20. The anchor came out at 50 pounds on my scale, and in most dimensions, it is just larger than every other anchor I've shown you. Uh, of course, the surface area of the fluke is very large, and the roll bar is very tall, but I think one of the bigger d differences in terms of how it performs is the height of the shank. The vertical portion of that shank is very tall, and what that does is it puts the fluke very deep into the seabed even before the shank has to bury. Now as you can see the shank is buried. Uh, the, unfortunately the roll bar is out of our field of view. I do believe it was also buried. We'll see some a little bit of debris on the roll bar on retrieval. But uh, no, just just an amazing performance. It ramped right up to the most that I'm willing to pull with this test rig and that's 5,300 pounds and it did so with hardly any motion on the seafloor, maybe uh, maybe two anchor lengths. I was pulling on the winch line about 25 feet, so obviously the dead man anchor was moving toward, uh, it was moving. Uh, this, of course, was the, the first pull that I did with that particular set of the dead man on that day, and, you know, every anchor has to have some motion in order to reach its maximum, but in, in terms of this particular set, that motion was greater with the dead man. 
Now, could it be that a 50-pound Viking 20 has greater holding power than a 47-pound Fortress FX85? Well, in this seabed, I say maybe. Keep in mind that the Viking is operating at 5 to 1 scope with a 12 feet of chain, and the Fortress is operating at 10 to 1 scope with no chain. The Viking did emerge from the seafloor very clean. Just a touch of mud and uh, almost no weeds. Uh, here on the bow roller, we do see evidence that that roll bar was fully buried. There's a touch of mud about halfway up and then that stringy sort of weed all the way near the top. Here's take two for that Viking 20. I've got the camera tether a little bit longer this time so we can see the whole anchor. And uh, we'll, we'll notice here shortly that the roll bar, in spite of it being so tall, it does fully bury. 100% of the roll bar goes away and it's not due to heaping. You can see at the very top of the screen, you just see a little peak of the roll bar left there. And here shortly, that will disappear. And again, 100% of the anchor and and some unknown amount of the chain road is completely buried. And that's that's just wonderful. That's, that's what you want to see. So the anchor did spend a, a bit of time, maybe about 10 feet of winch pulling in the mid-4000s, a bit of a hover there. That's a difference from the first try where it just ramped right up to 5300. But indeed, this anchor eventually did make its way up to 5300 uh, pounds of resistance. And I went ahead and kept pulling for a bit after that peak. And it descended down and had another plateau right around 5,000 for, oh, say, another 10 feet or so of winching. winching. And at that point, the winch got hot and I cut things off. So re really excellent performance. No sign that it was going to release or roll out. Um, not, not a lot of movement. Part of that low movement is due to the fact that the 2 to 1 winch ratio it just goes really, really slowly. Here we see the anchor is just a little bit of mud there stacked up in front of the shank. There's some a little bit of weed hanging there. All in all, a great performance. However, the roll bar did bend backwards during that last pull. Uh, this is the sixth anchor that I have bent during testing, and I, I'd like to prevent that in the future. So what I'm going to do is I will affix one of my helper straps, similar to the way that I strap all of the Mantis roll bar anchors. For this Viking, all of the bending occurred right at the base of the roll bar where it welds to its mounting flange, and just a little bit of the galvanizing has sort of buckled. So I'm pretty sure I'll be successful in bending this back, and again, get a strap on there, and that will be the end of the problem for this Viking 20. The Viking 10 roll bar is arguably a bit more robust. It uses the exact same size tube as its larger brother there, and it's just being a shorter height and much lighter loads. Uh, one could argue that the Viking 10 scantlings or engineering, at least for the roll bar, is just all around beefier. Next is an anchor that you haven't seen in my testing. Uh, this was a, a loner anchor. It is a 47 pound Vulcan, advertised as 20 kilogram, but again, 47 pounds, a little, little heavier than advertised. Uh, this anchor did very, very well. It had a sort of a slow but steady climb up into the mid 4000s, and it held there for, oh, another 10 feet or so. Then it climbed up and peaked at my maximum that I could pull 5,300 pounds, and I discontinued the test at that time. Notice as it's dragging along here that it is completely out of sight. There was no question that this anchor was completely buried all the time. In fact, you can't see any of the chain either, so it's very deeply buried. The seabed that's being sort of pushed up and cracking there is uniform left to right of the setting direction. That tells me that the anchor is not listing. It's just doing perfectly. And here is the anchor climbing up to its final bit. There's 5,000, 5,100. And again, the, the motor of the winch that I'm using is getting very hot at this time. There's really no way I can keep going beyond this. And again, for safety reasons, I, I try to stop things at around 5,000. 
Anyway, it does touch 53 there, and I cut things off at that time. Now, this was another anchor that had to have a tremendous amount of upward pull, and it collects mud. Whenever you pull an anchor out uh, just vertically, mud that's on it may have just been collected after the fact. So take that mud that's on there with a grain of salt. Here's take two for that same anchor, same day, same test, just a repeat, and it was quite similar. It did uh, ramp up at the same sort of rate, sort of a slow, steady climb up to a very high number. It was actually in the low or upper 4,000s that it had another sort of a plateau, and the peak never, never made 5 or 5,300, peaked at 5,000, and again, uh, it held that for quite a while, started going back down into the upper 4,000s, and just to give my equipment a break, cut things off at that time. The footage shows a very, very stable, uh, no rolling, no lifting, just perfect. Could not ask for a better behavior, and obviously these are extremely high numbers, well into the hurricane force of wind for this, this kind of pull for a 35-foot sailboat. And again, for anchors that have to be lifted vertically to get them to release from the seabed or, you know, the ones that didn't break out on their own, any mud that's on there, especially for the scoop or the concave type anchors, well, that mud just may have been collecting during the retrieval process only. Okay, that's it for the testing. Here is a graphical depiction of those resistance divided by weight numbers that we saw in the upper right hand of the screen throughout the testing. Note that the sandy mud is in blue, the previously tested soft mud green, and the cobblestone is in red. Uh, much larger numbers, obviously, for the sandy mud, in spite of the fact that it had the least favorable road conditions. Namely, the sandy mud only used 12 feet of chain at 5 to 1 scope. Uh, the soft mud had 80 feet of chain 5 to 1 scope. Cobblestone was at times 20 to 1 scope with, again, 80 plus feet of chain. Here's the latest 45-pound anchor ranking chart. Note the absence of the 47-pound Vulcan anchor that we just saw for the first time in this video. I do have all the testing completed. Uh, all the rankings have not been completed, however, and haven't, haven't processed all the footage. So we'll have to wait for the next anchor test video to see just how high up that Vulcan will land on the chart. High on the chart is how we'll describe the Viking 20. It is now in the top position. Note it, it, its total average is the same as the Excel, uh, but it uh, obviously the performance average of the Viking cannot be matched. Uh, the self-launching power of the Viking 20 is still uh, the just right down at the bottom. It doesn't really have any self-launching power unless there is an angle to its stowed position, an angle downward. Uh, engineering and strength column there. It is now down to a 2, the result of that bending of the Viking 20 roll bar in this test. Again, I downrated it from a 3 to a 2. Uh, the other thing to mention is the second column from the left. That is the numbers pertaining to this test today. It replaces the previous column known as deep set. Uh, this, this winch testing is just a far better way to explore these large anchors' maximum potential in the sandy mud, so no more deep set column whatsoever. So it was my hope at the end of this video here to run down the line and discuss the behavior of these anchors in greater detail, but there's just no time. We're up over an hour into this video as it is, so I will just make a few points. Uh, one is, is that creating a proper ranking for anchor behavior is probably not possible, at least not by me. For example, uh, let's take a steel spade anchor. They have a tendency to make really, really high resistance in that sandy mud, but they tend to pull out and be completely loaded with mud and have a very low chance of resetting. On the other hand, a Excel anchor is likely to roll out at a lower resistance number, but when it does, it has a much higher chance of resetting. So you tell me, what's a better behavior? Um, on the one hand, I could argue that, well, since the spade has generally higher numbers, maybe you just won't get there and the anchor won't pull out or release. So that be that would be great. Uh, then again, got somebody who could say, well, you, you just can't predict exactly when an anchor pulls out. Uh, maybe, maybe for some reason the spade just has a little bit worse part of a seabed or maybe there's a stick involved. Uh, in that case, you'd rather have an anchor that has a better tendency to reset. So once again, I could not make that ranking. You'll just have to do it for yourself based on what you think is more important. 
A uh, couple other things to mention is I did test the Mantis dinghy anchor at the same exact test. It was, it was with the same uh, 12 feet of 5 16 chain, so it's had a, probably had a really hard time bearing that chain, but it did make 380 pounds of resistance, which if you divide it by its three and a quarter pounds of weight, it put it above all these other steel anchors. The aluminum anchors, they're really, really high uh, of that resistance per, per weight, but among steel anchors, this was best. Um, I'll mention that the 20 pound range anchors in this same winch test, they were quite a bit lower across the board. As you know, many of these are duplicates, and if I just looked at all the duplicate of the 20 pound versus the 45 pound range anchors, if I took all of their resistance divided by weight numbers and averaged them and compared it to the average of the bigger anchors, you'd think they'd be the same, but not the case at all. It was We saw up well into the hundreds with the better big anchors and the smaller anchors were down, oh, 75 and lower. So there's actually a future video potential in just exploring this scaling study uh, in more great detail. However, but if, so the tr your trend based on that would be that the smaller the anchor, the less the performance. But here we have this baby anchor that turned it around and is actually better performance than even the largest anchor. So as far as an overall ranking of these anchors for today's test, it's very clear which was the winner, and that is the 47-pound Vulcan. And it's no longer on the bench here. It's back on the owner of that anchor's boat. Uh, we do have the 20-pound Vulcan that you can get a visual on. And uh, in terms of today's test, the 47-pound Vulcan clearly had very, very high numbers. It was 5,000 or more. Uh, behavior was perfect. It stayed completely buried very deeply. Uh, no sign that it was tending to roll. Just moved right along with very, very high resistance numbers for as long as my winch motor could stand it. Uh, and then, of course, the last thing, strength. Nothing, nothing bent on a Vulcan. I'll mention also that I did this exact same test some months ago with the 20-pound range anchors. And guess which anchor topped that group? Once again, it was the Vulcan. It was the only anchor that remained fully engaged for the full 90 feet, made very, very high pulling numbers, and of course, did not bend. So the Rock the Vulcan is just a fantastic design, at least for the seabeds around here. Once again, and I, I, I say this ad nauseum, my testing is not the end all because there are many, many other seabeds in the world that may be and likely are vastly different than the seabeds in my location. Well, if you're still here and managed to sit through this entire video, I think that arguably makes you a true anchor fanatic, and I commend you for that. I'm Steve Goodwin, always anchor safely, and we'll see you next time. So long.